Hi guys, my name is John, and today we're going to be going over Matthew chapter 7, the conclusion of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. We are continuing in Matthew chapter 7, which is part of the conclusion of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Now Jesus begins that part of his sermon with, Judge not, lest you be judged. And the rules that you use will also be used against you. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the rules you use, it will be used against you. Jesus illustrates this principle saying, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and totally ignore the plank in your own eye? My son works with me. So I get caught up a lot of the times being very judgmental on his work ethic. But then I'm constantly reminded that it took me a while to get where I'm at as well. Before we judge others on the one thing that we see wrong with them, we gotta remember that there's 10 other things that we ourselves have to make right. Ask, seek, and knock. Jesus is asking us to ask always, seek always, and knock always. He's also turning our attention to the needs and the hurt that is in this world. So Jesus is calling us to be the giver to those who ask, the answer or provider to those who seek, and the open door to those who knock. Many enter the wide gate on the road because it's easy to see. You don't have to look for it. Jesus said only a few find the small gate because only a few were searching, seeking, looking. The wide gate is the world that we live in. The road are the things in this world. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. The small gate is the word of God, the Bible. The narrow road is seeking the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit through scripture, walking an unseen road by faith and finding him. Jesus said, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. How do you tell a true prophet from a false prophet? Verse 20 says, thus by their fruit, you will recognize them. By their fruit? You're talking about like papayas, bananas, mangoes? Of course not, not that kind of fruit. In Galatians 5, Paul writes about life by the Spirit. Verse 22 to 23, he writes, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. That sounds like fruit of a true prophet to me. So the false prophets blend with the sheep, causing dissension, division, and hatred against one another. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. There's a saying that goes, if you're gonna talk the talk, you better walk the walk. So if we're called to be Christ's followers, then we should do as Christ did, loving those who are in need and helping them. So we must love God and love each other. Jesus talks about the wise and foolish builders. In this conclusion of his sermon, he tells us to do two things. Hear his word and put them into practice. I remember when I operated an excavator for the first time. I was so nervous. I was gonna pull a line, break a water line, or break something, but then my boss reassured me by showing me what to be aware of and how to go about operating the machine. And in doing so, it gave me the reassurance and the, and the confidence to, to operate it. Not because of my skill, but because of what he said. So when we put Jesus' words into practice in our life, it will build confidence, hope, faith, trust, not in our own strength, but in his word. Well, that's it for today, guys. But before we leave, I have three questions. The first one is, what can we do to be less judgmental to the people around us? Two, why is it important to be a good tree that bears good fruit? And three, how are you putting Jesus' words into practice? That's it for today. Thank you for being with us. And remember, love God, love each other, live aloha.